Uh, this is a walking tour from out South Road property, Cebu City, out by SM Mall, uh, back into downtown area. And this is a 360 degree video taken with my Insta360 X4, which means if you're on a smartphone, you just turn that phone around different directions and you will view different directions. You can stop the video, look up and down and all around. Um, if you're in full screen move, uh, mode in a computer, you should even be able to zoom in and zoom out. Um, it's about 6.6 .6 kilometers, a uh, little over three miles, I think, is, is what I walked. My battery ran out uh, 15 minutes down, down the way. And uh, anyway, if you're if you're on a computer or tablet, up in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, there's a little icon, and you can use that to look different directions as well. Or you can just uh, just follow along as it uh, as I walk down the down the street. My feet were hurting a little bit by the time I got into the downtown area. I can tell you that. And as I walk along, I'll uh, inform you, tell you a little bit about some of the issues that I've uh, en encountered in the last few days here in living in Cebu City, Philippines. Um, uh, for instance, this morning, no elevator. Um, I'm, I'm up 20 floors plus and uh, no elevator working. Two elevators, neither one of them working. So if someone wants to go down during, and this is pretty much rush hour when a lot of people are using them. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, the management uh, put, up, put up notices in the computer. It put notices up in the elevator. Uh, if the elevator stops, don't panic. You have oxygen. Calm everybody down. Wait for our mechanic to assist you. And uh, I told a couple of people, I wonder if that's a, a warning uh, for things to come here. And indeed it was. Indeed it was. It's happened a couple of times uh, since, since I, just in the last week or so. So not sure what the issues are with these, uh, with these elevators, but we have, we have a, lot of, a lot of problems with that type of thing. Water, uh, went down to get five gallons of water this morning. Fortunately, the, the guy around the corner, he's got a deep well and I was able to get my five gallons, 25 pesos, about 50 cents uh, for uh, purified water. So I really appreciate that. Guy on electric, a little electric, uh, I don't know what you call those, not really a scooter, electric vehicle. And uh, you're seeing, seeing more, more and more electric uh, tricycles, especially once you get out of the main part of downtown, uptown Cebu City. Um, some people want to regulate them and because they get, uh, uh, I'm not even sure, bicycles, electric bicycles don't have to be. Ah, the bus, number of different bus companies running different routes here and, and they change and evolve over time. So ask the locals if you need to go someplace. There are, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a south bus terminal near the downtown area, near E-Mall, City Mall area. And there's a, uh, that's the south bus terminal, mostly going south, obviously and a north bus terminal up by SM Mall in Cebu City. I'm, I actually went out to uh, SM Mall Seaside is where I was walking from. It looked like it could rain uh, off and on during much of my walk, but uh, in the end, I, I don't think it rained until the evening. And uh, we went through about three months of almost no rain in, in a drought here in, in the Philippines. And then in uh, about the middle of June, we went into our what's called southwest monsoons. The wind direction change, we start getting more moist air from the southwest. And uh, more rain. We're getting rain almost every day and or night, uh, once or twice. And uh, definitely need that, that moisture in the ground. Anyway, um, you know, it's, it, it usually rains 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes, uh, then it stops. 
and uh, if it rains real hard, which occasionally does, there will be flooding in certain areas. Uh, so be aware of that. Be aware of that as you look for uh, look for a place to live uh, with with traffic and such. You also want to be sure, whatever island you uh, move to, that there is a reliable source of water. There are areas of Bohol, for instance, um, that can go without during droughts. So when I came, first came in 2015, August, which was the wet season, uh, we were in a drought. Four years later, 2019, there was a drought. There were parts, uh, even wells in uh, Cebu City, that had run dry in different parts of the city. People had to uh, go down different times of the night or day and wait for a water truck to come and, and fill their jugs and buckets, whatever they could haul down to the street. There'd be lines of people waiting. Sometimes that water truck would show up, sometimes it wouldn't. I was fortunate enough uh, to have a relatively reliable supply of water where I was. Uh, but even here, where I'm living now, uh, 2019, I think they uh, they had to have water hauled in after after Odette, uh, the the type super typhoon Odette as well. Uh, they had to have water hauled in, and sometimes uh, from different sources, different companies, and what they usually relied on. So think about those things as you think about living someplace. Water, number one. Food reliability, of course, pretty important. And we've got, uh, we're very close to mountains, very close to mountains. And, uh, of course, we have the sea out here, uh, which is the case with many islands in the Philippines. And uh, has a, a, a great effect on the weather. This morning it was sunny. It looked like it was going to be a, a very sunny day all day. I pulled my drapes, uh, closed my doors and windows, pulled my drapes so the, uh, the when the when the east sun comes in, it'll shine on my refrigerator, really heat that door up. So I closed my drapes so it wouldn't wouldn't shine on my refrigerator and into my room. And uh, within an hour or two, uh, presently we've got uh, pretty much pretty much 100% coverage with high clouds. So it's diffused light, diffused light. It, it's still, uh, you know, I grew up in the Midwest, Minnesota. And I know the boy, rainy, dark days there can be, uh, be dreary days, dreary. And I uh, never liked that, never cared for that, but here, the days, even when it rains, generally warm. If you get wet and there's a breeze, it, you're going to feel cool or even cold. That wind chill factor. And there have been a few places with landslides, uh, heavy flooding d down in central Mindanao. I just read an article this morning. There, there's still towns and villages that have quite a bit of flooding. People wandering around up to their knees and waists in water. Um, think about that when you decide to move into a subdivision someplace. I've, I've, as I've traveled around these nine years, I've seen some subdivisions that look like that doesn't seem like a good place to put a subdivision because it's relatively low. And I'm wondering how are they going to, when it rains and they, they've got houses and, and streets paved how are they going to handle all that water? Where's it going to go, uh, being low, lying so low? And even in, 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 I lived in Las Vegas, Nevada very, many years, and Phoenix, Arizona many years. I know Las Vegas, they, uh, boy, they scraped the sides of mountains and uh, just kept building on up the sides of the foothills and mountains, housing developments, and uh, they get very little rain there in a... Uh, in a year, but when it did rain, it washed washed away a lot of that desert soil, undercut some of the foundations of those uh, brand new, very expensive subdivisions. They didn't plan for, you know, a half inch rain in Las Vegas or Nevada causes flooding in the streets. Not very much, but uh, they plan for, you know, maybe a quarter inch or something like that.
just to the left here, you've got, uh, I think it's called Cebu Home Builder Supply, a uh, big hardware store. They've got a number of locations uh, in Cebu. Uh, I suspect they're on other islands as well, not sure. There are a number of large, uh, large uh, hardware stores here in the Philippines, chains. Uh, Belmont, Belmont is one. They've got a number of very large one in the downtown area. They've got, uh, there they're not even many, many more medium sized to small hardware stores. So you can find what you're looking for. A little different. You, you, can, you can get a lot of the Western, uh, what you're familiar with, uh, the, the Western brands in these stores. Um, there are, you, you get into some areas, downtown areas, you'll probably find some knockoff type brands. Uh, so just be aware of what you're buying. How do you do that? How do you, how do you uh, identify the real thing from a knockoff fake product? I have bought one or two fake products. Uh, the last one I bought was a uh, micro SD SIM, uh, not SIM card, a micro SD memory card. And uh, the price was too good to be true. And sure enough, I got it home, opened the package. Uh, didn't have nearly the capacity. And I bought it from one of the street vendors, you know, so no receipt, nothing like that. Look, look legit, had all the, the same packaging as uh, the name brands. But uh, fake, and you know, when I bought this camera too, um, they told me if, uh, if you activate it at home, um, we, may not, we may not back the warranty. If there's a problem and you try to activate it at home, there may be a problem because there are a lot of fake micro SD memory cards out there and uh, you gotta put that, that card in there to activate it and uh, that type of thing. I guess it doesn't work because it doesn't have any, any internal memory, I guess. And uh, so I had I had a GoPro with me that I was carrying with me and I had a uh, SIM there or the memory card in there. I pulled it out, put it in there and had them activated right in the store. And uh, so that worked. But yeah, be aware if, if generally electronic stuff is more expensive. The memory cards here are quite a bit more expensive than back in the U.S. I'm not sure about Europe. I suspect the same and other countries. Uh, so if you need memory cards, if you think you might need memory cards, purchase them in your home country. Electronics, my experience, 50 to 20 percent more could be more than that. Uh, you can order some things from Amazon. They, they, will, they will deliver some things here in the Philippines. I have, I have heard that anything under 200 US dollars does not get the extra customs fees. If it's over $200, and I, I did this, I looked at the price of a, a camera many, many months ago and it was 400 something. And because of that, there was a huge markup just because of the uh, customs fees that were required to be paid. Even though the initial price was uh, substantially less than what I would have to pay here in the Philippines. The camera stores have been getting better over the years, the nine years I've lived here. Uh, it used to take a long time to get the newer cameras in and accessories. Uh, now they, they've been coming in uh, a little bit quicker, a little bit later than what, when they come into the U.S. for instance. Uh, but we get them a little bit quicker. Um, they're generally lacking in accessories. I find it's hard, even accessories I want to buy for the various cameras, is that uh, no, out of stocks are out of stock. Um, so if you're looking for those types of things, number one, because of the price, number two, because of availability, even online, I find out of stock uh, very frustrating when you want when you want a piece and you, you can't order it. You know, we get spoiled in the U.S. with Amazon and other sites shipping uh, shipping overnight. Anyway, my battery 
ran out just about this time. So if you're still with me, thanks for coming along. Stay safe, safe travels. Check those uh, flights. There are a lot of decent flights out there. So see you next time.